Okay, hi, my name is Madison. So today we have a lot going on. It's Tuesday, so we have the vet down there and the farrier down here. Brian's also working with King. He's an ex-reservation stud. We gelded him when we got him. He's just now starting to get used to us. Devin's been working with him, and Brian just started working with him this week. Super sweet guy. So today we're gonna work with King. King was an unhandled reservation stallion, Talia with All Seated in the Barn Rescue back in August of 2023. He went with a couple of handlers working with him, getting him halter broke. And now we're gonna start introducing him to some of my methodology. He's very cautious of trusting people. He's had some previous groundwork done with one of the other members of the team in Texas. We will always kind of reassure him that we're not the bad guy, we're not the boogeyman. I'm not for sure what methodologies or training tools they used in his previous ground handling and groundwork. I'll just be sure that he knows with me and the way I do things that he's properly introduced. Whatever methodology they used on desensitizing him, it did a pretty good job. You could see if he got too scared, he could literally run away from me. I barely have this in my hand. Okay, so he doesn't like that, but you know what? He's not moving his feet. That's huge for this guy. A horse is very reactive like King. Carry my stick and string in a very neutral position. If I stick this stick out to him, it means something. You see that, how he reacted? Until I want him to react to something that I'm doing with my body language, keep your stick and string in a neutral position. If you stick the stick and string out, if you place it out toward him, it will mean something. Here's an example of that. I did not pull on the line, on the line whatsoever. There we go, getting past that sticking point. You can move your feet all you want, King. We'll work with it. Working with a horse like King, you have to be slow and deliberate. <laughs> slow and deliberate and exaggerate your body language a little bit. But you have to know when to apply that methodology. Slow it down to a pace he can absorb. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, not a great departure, but he didn't bolt off in any direction, I'll take that. Part of the art of working with a horse like this is knowing when his try is there and knowing when to ask for a better try. He squares up pretty good there. He's trying really good, really hard, but I know he's better. The point I'm making here is don't let your horse learn to cheat. Know the difference between a try and them being lazy. Good, look in his lips, feet standing still, soft eyes. We'll take that and be done with that portion of the lesson. I'm Desiree at LC in the Barn. I just got done writing today. Also, we have a few volunteers out here who just, you know, come out, horse therapy, and just have a relaxed day because throughout the week, it's just busy. Hi, my name is Lauren. I volunteer when I can. It's my me This is my horse therapy. This is what I do for my mental health. It helps me get through the day when I'm having a bad day, and it's something that I love, it's a passion I have. So every time I come here, I just, I usually walk in around and feed the carrots to the horses because that's like my like, thing for fun. And then I clean out stalls, I groom them, I give them bath, take them for a walk, and put them back in their, in their stall, and just give them love. It's my way of giving back to the, this community. One of the nurses I work with, sister who works here, she introduced me to them, and they, they've been a, a wonderful family. Like, they're very welcoming, and it's been awesome here. So this horse has only ever had a saddle one time, to my knowledge. We're gonna introduce a couple of other things to him. Anybody that's been around horses, there's been a time or two you've, you've dropped your saddle pad or your saddle fell off or the horse was shaking or whatever. Find yourself an old saddle pad or an inexpensive saddle pad and start throwing it around the ground around him. Yeah, step on it, that's what I want him to do. Shake the sand out of it, huh? His body's quivering, but he's taking it. Look in his lips, signs of acceptance, soft eyes, feet are still. This is a youth saddle, and it's light enough I could carry it and fling it around with one arm pretty easily. So all I want to do right now is just touch him with it. Yeah, notice he still has the saddle pad on his back. That's huge. If 
he's had a saddle on him before, as I was explained. I don't know if they did it alone, if they had a helping hand, don't really matter to me. When you're working with a horse like this, a point I wanna make for safety, and it sounds counterintuitive, but if you ever get busy with a horse, or a horse gets busy with you rather, keep a short rein and always walk to their hip. If you're pulling their nose and walking to their hip, their motor, their dangerous part, is gonna swing away from you. And I'm just gonna gently and slowly try to reach under him, see if he lets me. So, I do not have this cinch and latigo strapped. There's nothing gonna be dangerous for the horse. If he was to jump sideways or whatever, the entire latigo would come loose, the saddle would fall off, and the horse is not in harm's way. He's not gonna get tangled up. Tighten it about an inch more. I don't want this horse to buck. Oftentimes, when you put a saddle on a horse for the first or second time, they're gonna buck, at least crow hop. But we wanna minimize that as much as possible. So before I ask him to start moving, where he has this cinch that's relatively new to him on his chest, I'm gonna let him sit here, feel everything tightened around him. Then I'm gonna step away and I'm gonna ask him to start moving his feet. If he bucks, if he crow hops, that's okay. But we wanna to try to do in the beginning what we can to minimize that. Now I want him to stand still until I can move out of his harm's way. That's okay, we'll take that. Oh, good, that's excellent. Well, looky there, will you look at that? Will you look at that? So based on what I know about this horse, this is the second saddling. And I would say so far it's gone highly successful. Notice he gets a little uncertain when he starts picking up the trot. That's all right. Unhandled less than a year ago, untamed stallion from a reservation to now having the saddle on for what we know to be the second time. So in this session, we've demonstrated a previously wild reservation stallion can begin to think when given an opportunity. Learns to think versus react. We've demonstrated that he's taken a saddle once before, now he's taken it twice before, and he handled it really well. Now I got my sense dragging off the other side. Hmm, pretty big win. Down there with Dr. Lucas, she's looking at Frito. He is a donkey that they got at the Tulare auction the beginning of the month, end of May. He got surgery down at Alamo on his tendons because he was rotated. So we're trying to straighten out those angles in his leg and in his feet. So we're rechecking him so that Walker can trim him properly. Walker's working on a new horse, Louise. We got her about a month ago. We've just been getting her fatter and healthier. I'm not just getting her feet done. Good morning, I'm Dr. Katrina Lucas. We're here at All Seated in a Barn. We had a donkey that had some contracted tendons, so wasn't allowing him to, he was knuckling over. So we referred him for a deep digital flexor tenotomy. Um, we removed the sutures and we just put a little bit of wound spray over it so it doesn't get infected. And we just finished taking some radiographs to see how we can adjust him with farriery. And he's walking a lot better already. So another good success story here. How's it going guys? It's Devin down here at All Seated in a Barn. We're fixing to ride Bodie. He's over there tied to the sea train. He's a little spooky, watchy on the trail, so really I just get on him and ride him around anything I can that's gonna make him kinda worrisome and try to ride him through it. So he's gotten a lot better and he's only gonna get better with time. Hi, my name is Terry and I've been a volunteer with All Seated in a Barn probably five and a half years. I was a stay-at-home mom, raised all my kids, didn't get my first horse until I was 59 and learned to ride and had horses for about five years. And then we moved back to Bakersfield and I didn't know that was preparing me to come out here. I had a friend that told me that there was a rescue here in town and I hadn't heard of it and she was going to volunteer. So she gave me the name, I looked it up, I called Leanne and I started volunteering and she's never volunteered. So she was just the connector. I don't mind cleaning pins. I like it for the exercise. And I think my favorite is just grooming them, especially the ones that are afraid of your touch. I like to get them used to being handled. I like to get them to trust me. When they give to me, whether it's just barely turning their head toward me or let me touch their nose or letting them smell my hand, there's such a gratefulness to me that they're trusting me, that they are allowing me into their space. Today, right now, I have Tex that I am doctoring right now. Also doing ice boots uh, just to help have the swelling goes down. Right now, it's a little swollen. This is a hot mix. I'm also going to have on his chest, it's a little soft tissue, so I would assume he probably got it an accident so I'm gonna have this and then his sheath is a little swollen as well so we're gonna add it around it so the swelling could go down. 
Hey everyone, so tomorrow is our local auction here in California. Last month when we attended, we were able to help 12 horses, well, 11 horses and one donkey. Hopefully tomorrow we can do just as good, if not even more good. The purpose of us attending and why it's so important is that who we help won't end up on a horse trader's trailer where they ultimately just end up traded around. They end up sent back to Texas. They sent to kill pens and it's just, it's a whole mess. They don't deserve that. They don't need that. What they need is a soft landing with proper rehabilitation, proper assessment, proper training, proper vet care all the things that's my plan i need your help to do that and hopefully we do more than 12. that's my goal every month do a little bit better do a little bit better do a little bit better it's three thousand dollars of a horse that's what we fundraise for that goes towards all their initial vetting farrier work dentals training assessment quarantine all the things that's what they need we've got to set them up for success immediately out the gate i'll take any help i can get and i would love to get there immediately knowing we're going to save one two three four we've already got the funds for it put their numbers down and move forward so let's work together let's make this happen and and let's make a huge difference tomorrow in the lives of these horses. We have fundraised for almost five horses and we have over 14 on our list. Please, if you can donate, this is it for them. If you watch our stories, you'll see the ones that we're focusing on. I don't post all of them because a lot of these people follow us on social media. So they see who we're bidding on and then if it's theirs, they bid us up or they're their friends. Trust me, please share, please donate if you can and let's try to do as much good today as we can to keep these horses from ending up in the wrong place. The best way to support us is always through donations, whether that be product that we need or monetary. And you can do that by joining our Patreon, going to the website, or visiting any of our social media platforms for links on the best ways to help us.